Hello everyone, I'm Lee Bogle, your state safety engineer, and today I'm here with Clay Colwell, the assistant director of safety. Over the past several weeks, we've all been overwhelmed with the information regarding the coronavirus and what we need to do to protect ourselves. That's right, Lee. We've been collecting data from the CDC, from the governor's office, and the Tennessee Department of Health. We've been taking that data and trying to turn it into guidance uh, that can be used to, to not only keep our employees safe, but to keep their families safe as well. One of the things we keep hearing from our employees is, is information or concern about wearing a mask versus a respirator and, and what's different about those. And could you share some information about that? I'd be glad to, Lee. But first, I think we need to talk a little about the virus itself and how it spreads. We've all heard the term droplet being used to describe the coronavirus. Right, so what exactly is a droplet? Well. A droplet is a tiny amount of moisture, in this case, one that comes out of a person's mouth or nose when coughing, sneezing, or even talking. Talking? Yeah. I mean, how many times have you been sitting across from someone at a table or desk having a conversation and you got spit on? Mm. See, the thing about droplets is that they're heavier than air. Uh, they're so heavy, in fact, that they will, they will typically fall out of the air uh, within six feet of their point of origin. Okay. So that's why the CDC recommends to stay six feet apart. Exactly. Okay. The, the primary method of transmission for the coronavirus is through droplets that will fall out of the air within six feet. Okay. okay. To demonstrate that, let's take a look at this very short video. So Clay, what do we have here? Well, Lee, what we've got is a, a small demonstration prepared to show where droplets would fall uh, if they were emitted from a particular source, in this case, a spray bottle with a solution of bleach. So uh, when we gently squeeze the, the spray bottle, we can see where those droplets fall. Oh yeah, I see that they're all staying within the range of about four feet or so, is where, and four feet or less. Exactly, exactly. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that if somebody uh, in a conversation spits on me that much, yeah. we're going to have something other to talk about than coronavirus. Yeah. You mean the virus doesn't hang out in the air? Nope. In order for this to happen, the droplets would have to be reduced in size to microscopic particles of moisture called aerosols. Aerosols contain particles that are light enough to float around in the air carrying the virus with them. Only in special conditions such as performing certain surgical procedures on an infected patient are aerosols generated. So if we stay six feet apart then we never touch the droplets and we can eliminate droplets that fall on surfaces by simply wiping them away with disinfectants. Are there any other ways that we can prevent the spread of, of the droplets? Absolutely. That's where a simple mask comes into play. So what you're saying is we wear masks to prevent the spread of droplets from us, not to keep us from being exposed to the virus. You got it. Now we've seen all sorts of masks being worn. What kind of mask is needed to reduce the spread of the droplets? We've moved inside to the headquarters materials laboratory to talk about when and where it would be appropriate to wear a mask. Now we've seen a whole lot of masks being worn. Which ones would be the most effective at reducing those droplets we just looked at? Well, that's a good question, Lee. There's actually a lot of different uh, options that are available that'll, that'll do that job. Uh, everything from a commercially available disposable mask, um, like this one here, um, uh, a homemade mask uh, made out of an uh, old t-shirt cloth and some rubber bands, or even uh, this particular type of, uh, of option that's often referred to as a net gaiter. It slides over your head um, and can be pulled up to cover the, both the, the nose and the mouth. Um, those are the parts of, of the face that would generate those droplets. Any one of these, as long as they completely cover the nose and mouth, will be effective at reducing the spread of droplets. So Clay, I'm noticing that the lab technicians are not wearing masks. Well, that's a good point, Lee. But if you look around, you can see that, that there's plenty of space between the technicians. So Oh, so they're way out of range of the droplets. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So in this case, there's really not a need to wear a mask. OK. Clay, we're here now in an office setting. So I know the six foot rule probably applies here as well. Could you help me through when that would be appropriate to wear a mask? Sure. It's a good idea to wear a mask anytime that you're going to be closer than six feet 
from a group of people for an extended period of time. Oh, so that's like the grocery store, Lowe's, Home Depot, and those areas where, you know, it's just been really crazy lately as how many people have been Absolutely. attending those areas. Absolutely. Okay. And, and here at TDOT, think about situations where multiple team members have to work in close proximity for a decent time period. Clay, in the performance of our normal workday activities and getting prepared for the day, do we really need to be wearing a mask at that point? Well, Lee, if you, if you look at what the workers are doing, you know, they may be coming in close contact for just a, a brief second or two, but, but they're not sitting face to face or, or having a conversation. So there's really no need for a mask in a situation like this. Now, Clay, as we're standing here in the garage setting, this looks like a place where that might be appropriate to wear a mask. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right, Lee. What we see here, we've got two technicians that are working in close proximity, and they may be working on this motor for a while, working together to fix this piece of equipment. So, so this is a case where it probably is a good idea to go ahead and wear a mask, and then they don't have to worry about it. So now, Clay, what about this situation? Well, Lee, this is completely different. You know, all the technicians that you see, they're all working in their own workspace. They're well uh, distance apart. They're a lot much further than six feet. So, so in this case, there's no real need for them to wear a mask. Okay. Now keep in mind, a person can reduce the spread of droplets by wearing masks in other situations as well. But demonstrating good hygiene practices and keeping a safe distance are the most effective ways to prevent the spread of coronavirus. So is TDOT going to provide masks for our employees? The short answer is yes, in some form. As you can imagine, there are shortages of lots of things right now, including simple face masks. However, we're doing things like requesting masks from outside vendors, accessing emergency supply chains, and, and some of our regions are even making kits that include mask materials to give to their staff. I made one for myself out of an old t-shirt. I just watched the video from the Surgeon General and followed his instructions. Here's how you can make your own face covering in a few easy steps with items you can find around the house, like an old scarf, a bandana or a hand towel, or you can make a face covering out of an old t-shirt. Fold it to the middle from the bottom, fold it to the middle from the top, fold it again to the middle from the bottom, and again from the top, and then two rubber bands, one on one side and one on the other side. Then you fold either side to the middle and you have yourself cloth face covering. It's that easy. Can an employee bring a mask from home? Absolutely. Many of our industrious team members have been able to secure their own supplies and they're welcome to wear a mask that they already have on hand. Can you tell us anything about how to care for face masks? How long do they last? Well, a homemade cloth mask can and probably should be laundered periodically using soap and hot water. A disposable mask, like this one, can be worn multiple times, but it will eventually collect enough funk that it needs to be thrown out and replaced. So let's switch gears and talk about respirators for a minute, and how do they differ from face masks? Okay, respirators are devices that offer protection to the user uh, by blocking something that could cause bodily harm by entering a person's respiratory system. Okay, so we're not talking about just a simple irritant like dust or pollen. Typically, no. A respirator, like this N95 respirator, is only used when a person is going to be potentially exposed to an agent that is known to be harmful. In this case, a virus in the form of an aerosol. But didn't we already learn that the coronavirus is spread by droplets? Our people wouldn't really need the protection of a respirator, would they? For the most part, no, they wouldn't. You may recall that I mentioned the virus being transmitted by aerosol during certain medical procedures. Well, as certified emergency first responders, our help team could possibly encounter this when responding to a medical emergency. That's why we've given them N95 respirators to use on an emergency basis only. But they should be able to perform most of their duties while following the safe practices we've already talked about. That's correct. There's another important reason that we need to be conservative when it comes to respirators. There are hundreds of healthcare workers right here in Tennessee that are exposed to the virus on a regular basis, and this protective gear is essential to their well-being. 
Well, we've covered a lot of material today related to um, a lot of different topics. So if you would like more information about this, just visit TDOT's COVID response page and that'll provide you some additional resources there. Please don't hesitate to reach out to any member of the TDOT safety team with any questions you might have. We'll support you in any way that we can. Have a great day and remember your form.